All right, let's talk a little politics. Let's talk about Donald Trump going to carry the state of New York in the general election. How much fun is that? Joining me now is Mark Simone, WOR radio show host, Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, and Liz Peek, syndicate commas, Fox News contributor. So, Mr. Trump, uh, he lost by 5.6 percentage points, roughly 300,000 votes. That was Lee Zeldin lost in the last election, which ain't bad. Uh, here's Mr. Trump talking about it yesterday when he was up in uh, Harlem visiting a bodega. But this city, I love this city, and it's gone so bad in the last three years, four years, and we're going to straighten New York out. So running for president, we're putting a big hit on New York. We think we can win New York. So, uh, let's speak, I'll start with you. While the New York political establishment from the White House on down, actually, is trying to railroad and weaponize him and put him in jail for 700 years. There he is up at a bodega doing some good and talking to the folks and getting a heck of a good reception. I know it's smart. What do you make of it? I think it's, I think it's ambitious, optimistic, but I'll tell you what he's going to do pretty well in New York compared to the past, I'm guessing, because New Yorkers are so frustrated and all the issues that Donald Trump is campaigning on resonate here. The border, our city is overrun by people here illegally. And by the way, I talked to three Hispanics today who are going to vote for Donald Trump. Why? Really? Because their neighborhoods are being trashed mm. by all these people who are here illegally. They're bringing drug trading, all the things that they don't want in their neighborhoods. I can't tell you how offended people, uh, Hispanics who are here legally are by what's going on at the southern border, Larry. It is a real problem for, for uh, Joe Biden, I think. I, I mean, I hope, and by the way, I thought Donald Trump going up to Harlem uh, and getting that, feeding into that wellspring of frustration and anger was completely brilliant. Just like um, Joe Biden going to the Rockettes in Radio City Music Hall and not raising all that much money compared to what Trump raised, and Trump going out to Long Island yeah. uh, to be in the wake of that four tragic cop who was killed by an illegal criminal. Um, Joe Concha, I think he wants to do a rally in Madison Square Garden, and then he's going to do one in Yankee Stadium. Wow. <laughs> if you told me... I just want to throw that out there. If you told me, say, January 7, 2021, that he had plans to do that while he was running for president, I would say you were crazy. Hmm. Now, after seeing that reception in Harlem, just like we saw at that Chick-fil-A down mm -hmm. in Atlanta, mm -hmm. if you watch other networks, he should have been driven out by protesters, mm -hmm. all saying, we can't be around this person. He was warmly embraced in both of those places. And we talked about this before. This is bringing back memories of Ronald Reagan going to Harlem uh, before an election when people thought that that was crazy and it turned out that it was a good strategy. Overall, will Donald Trump win New York? Probably not. But other states that people aren't talking about right now, like Virginia, for example, is probably very much in play. Joe Biden is underwater in almost every state in this country, including New York. So while maybe he could pull it out because that's just how New York votes, he may have to spend more money and more time in that's places it. he didn't that, expect to. That's the whole that thing. Is a big deal. He'll, he'll tie Biden down. That's exactly right. And cause him to spend some of that Radio City musical Rockette money. <laughs> Mark Simone, I'm going to have you come in a minute. I got another quote. Um, on the trial and a reverse effect. Hold on a second. Here comes some more Trump. Every legal scholar, every legal pundit said there should be no trial. This is not, there was nothing done wrong. This is all politics. This is coming out of the White House. We're doing better now than we've ever done. So I think it's having a reverse effect. You know what? All I want is fairness. I love that. We want Trump in the background. Uh, Mark Simone, what do you make of this trial? Well, you know, they had the jury fill out a detailed questionnaire about any possible bias. They should have had the judge fill out a questionnaire. I don't know why <laughs> they didn't do that. Uh, Democrats should watch that video, the bodega visit. They will be terrified. That crowd is chanting for him. They're cheering for him. This is a de in Harlem, where it should be a Democratic uh, neighborhood. They love Trump up there. Uh, he's going to do this all the time. He's going to go to a different crime site, a different disaster, migrant center, do these appearances. By the way, they brought it among themselves, treating him so badly, not even letting him go to his son's graduation down in, uh, in uh, South Flor uh, Florida. But the point is, I don't, 
I was looking at some polls. People don't think he was guilty. I think most people sort of scratch their head, including legal scholars. I mean, not just Jonathan Turley, but a lot of legal scholars across the board. I don't mean to exclude Jonathan's a smart guy, but you've got left of center people that sort of scratch their head. What is he being tried for? We don't know. You know, the non-disclosure agreement, they call it hush money to make it sound bad, is perfectly legal. It Bloomberg was a personal, personal payment. What is wrong with a personal? Something, by the way, lawyers, I mean, my kid, I'm not even sure Trump knew. He probably just said, go on ahead and do this. Take care of this for me. Yeah. This is what happens when you're a big business guy. You remember the debate? Bloomberg had to admit he'd signed dozens of these hush money right. agreements with women. Ah, ooh, and, uh, that's Trump very said, telling. Trump said... This is what you call it. You call it a legal expense. You're writing the check, the lawyer, he's doing a document. It's a legal expense. Liz Peek, I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying it's very hard to figure this out, particularly in light of the fact that there's supposed to be a federal election crime involved. They can't name it in the indictment. And furthermore, the Federal Election Commission looked at this and rejected this. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit like, remember during the financial crisis, you had those financial instruments that were all kind of tiered one on the other, and all of a sudden it turned out there was nothing there and they all collapsed. Mm. Those, remember those, uh, those multi layered uh, financial instruments? That's kind of what this is. You have 39 misde misdemeanors that can only become translated into felonies if there is an attached felony. Mm. But as you point out, no one has been able to discover the attached felony. And by the way, if you don't give that to the other team for discovery, then it's really not, you're not playing correctly, you're not legally. Uh, uh, Properly behaving. I mean, this is all just baloney. Even honestly. Democrats wouldn't look at it. Well, the, the New York Side Times called it creative. It. It's more than creative. It's completely. <laughs> Joe Concha, um, I'm going to do this as a caram shot because Liz Peek wrote this really tough piece. It's playing at the top of Fox News Digital. Yes. Um, it says Mar Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene is an idiot. Now, she didn't do the headline, she just wrote the piece. But you saw Speaker Johnson, we interviewed him for a while, mm -hmm. covered the waterfront. What did you think? What was your honest appraisal? Authentic, uh, authentic and just no nonsense. Yes. In other words, he's not yes. there to put on a show. Yes. He's not there to go viral. He's saying, here are our problems. Here's what I can do within my limits. And this is what we're going to try to do moving forward. The bottom line is that Republicans, if they had a larger majority, then they could ram through some of the things that they want. They don't have that. So he has to compromise. So whether it was Kevin McCarthy or, or Speaker Johnson or whoever else may be after him, if Marjorie Taylor Greene and that aspect of the Republican Party kicks him out, nothing. Thing will change because the numbers aren't there. I happen to like Marjorie Taylor Greene quite a bit, but putting that aside, he's doing what he can do. I mean, he made that very clear. He does not have a bulletproof majority in the House for sure. Yeah. He doesn't have any majority in the Senate for a second sure. He's got the foreign funding is in this. But he's got the border bill in this also. He's got the close the border stuff from H.R. 2. And he's got some election reform in this. And he's even trying to do some sanctions on China uh, and Iran, which, of course, the Bidens refuse to do because they're worried about gasoline prices. I mean, I don't have any sympathy with people that want to replace him. I just don't see it. What exactly are you going to change, get, who, why, where? You listen to New York Sports Radio, right? And forever, I do, for, I do periodically. Before Aaron Rodgers, you always heard about, we got to replace this Jets quarterback. Okay, who's your option then behind him? How does the team get better? In other words, who's behind Mike Johnson? Marjorie Taylor Greene then should offer up to be the speaker. Let her get in there and let's see how that goes because it's, nothing is going to change. Because the numbers aren't there. They don't have the Senate, and they don't have the numbers in the House. So what are we talking about here? Liz, you'd be for Marjorie Taylor Greene for speaker. <laughs> no. I mean, but, but to your point, she doesn't have a candidate that she's backing, and that was the case when Kevin McCarthy was thrown out, too. Yeah. The people who threw him out, Matt Goetz in particular, he didn't have a candidate who could win the consensus, the majority vote. I mean, this is a democracy. This is how it works, folk. If she doesn't like the bills that are going out, she votes against them. That's what she's got. She's got one district in Georgia that's plus 22. That's her big selling point. It's not a big group of people. Deal with it. Yeah. Shut up. And by the way, when Donald Trump came out and said he supported Michael Johnson, that should have been enough for all these people yeah, who are backbenchers. They should have said, okay, yeah. we're going to make this work because that's the game. Mark Everybody's Simone. a rhino. Mark Simone, yeah, you're yeah, taking the right. over or the under. Really?
on Trump carrying New York State. Uh, Reagan did it twice. Mm -hmm. Trump is wow. a guy who does things that could, you, you ever, could you imagine a private citizen running for president and winning? He's done the impossible before. He'll do it this time. You're taking the over. I love Save it. Save the tape. Mark Simone. <laughs> going under. Joe Concha. Save the tape. I'm